Thank you, Carlos. Um, so uh, as, as you heard, we'll be presenting the results of uh, the Destiny Bresto 2 trial for the first time uh, this morning. Um, these are my disclosures. So to understand how trastuzumab, deruxtecan, or TDXD best fits into our treatment algorithm, uh, it's worth thinking about the evolution of treatment for HER2-positive uh, disease. Uh, in the second line, initially the standard was TDM1 based on the AMELIA trial, um, but uh, based on the strength of the subsequent destiny Bresto 3 trial, which compared TDM1 to TDXD, uh, TDXD was found to be markedly superior and thus TDXD became uh, the recommended option in the second line setting. In the third line, in patients who previously had TDM1, uh, TDXD demonstrated robust activity uh, in that setting in the phase two single arm study, Destiny Bresto 1, which led to the accelerated approval of TDXD in that third line setting. So, Destiny Bresto 2, uh, the study we'll be talking about today, is a phase three trial comparing TDXD. Uh, to treatment of physician's choice in that post-TDM1 setting. And it was designed as the confirmatory trial for Destiny Bresto 1. So the Destiny Bresto 2 trial uh, enrolled uh, centrally confirmed HER2 positive uh, patients uh, who had previously been treated with TDM1. They were randomized to either TDXD as a single agent at the standard dosing or treatment of physician's choice, which in this study consisted of capecitabine with trastuzumab or capecitabine uh, with lapatinib. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival by independent review. Overall survival was an important secondary endpoint, uh, which was to be evaluated in a hierarchical fashion if the PFS endpoint uh, was significant. So this is the patient population. There were 400 uh, approximately patients on TDXD and about 200 on treatment of physician's choice. Uh, these were largely a third and fourth line patient population. All of the patients had had prior trastuzumab and TDM1 by design, and about 78% had prior pertuzumab. So these are patients who had uh, essentially uh, all of the uh, targeted HER2 therapies that were available at the time the trial was being run. So this is the primary endpoint of progression-free survival by blinded independent central review. TDXD was superior to treatment of physician's choice. The hazard ratio was 0 0.3589, so about a 64% reduction uh, in the risk of uh, progression or death. This was highly statistically significant. The median progression-free survival was 17.8 months with TDXD and 6.9 months with tr treatment of physician's choice. If you look at the two-year landmark analysis, you see that 42% of patients on the TDXD arm uh, were progression-free at that time point uh, versus 13.9% with treatment of physician's choice. Because the progression-free survival endpoint was statistically significant, we did evaluate overall survival in a formal analysis. Here again, TDXD uh, was superior to treatment of physician's choice. The hazard ratio here was 0 0.66, so a 34% reduction in death uh, with TDXD compared to treatment of physician's choice. The median uh, was 39 months uh, with TDXD and 26.5 months uh, with treatment of physician's choice, so a 13-month improvement in overall survival. And again, uh, this was statistically significant, uh, even at this relatively early time point. It's also worth noting that the survival curves uh, separate fairly early. Uh, I don't know if I have a pointer here now. Um, they separate fairly early, so even at the 12-month time point, uh, there was a uh, substantial difference in survival. 89.4% of patients on the treatment of physician's choice arm, I'm sorry, 89.4% of patients on the TDXD arm uh, were alive at that one-year time point compared with 74.7% uh, 74 of patients on treatment of physician's choice. Secondary and uh, exploratory efficacy endpoints also favored TDXD. In terms of confirmed objective response by independent review, uh, the uh, rate for TDXD was uh, almost 70%, 69.7%, compared to 29% uh, with treatment of physician's choice, and this was highly statistically significant. Complete responses were seen in 14% of patients on TDXD compared to 5% with treatment of physician's choice. And clinical benefit rate at six months, which is 
the number of the percentage of patients who have an objective response or stable disease for at least six months uh, was 82 percent uh, with TDXD versus 46 percent with treatment of physician's choice. Turning to the safety analysis, uh, the percent of patients who had uh, serious uh, adverse events uh, were similar in the two arms. The percent of patients who had to discontinue uh, study therapy because of a drug-related adverse event was 14% uh, with TDXD versus 5% with treatment of physician's choice. Uh, most of the patients uh, on the TDXD arm who had to discontinue uh, were due to interstitial lung disease or pneumonitis. And overall, the rate of ILD, which is an important known uh, uh, potential adverse event with TDXD was 10.4 percent, which is in line or slightly lower than we've seen in other uh, TDXD studies. Two patients, or 0.5 percent, had grade 5 uh, um, or fatal drug-related ILD. Virtually all the other cases were very low grade. Overall, the adverse event profile of TDXD in this study was very similar to what we've seen with other uh, trials of TDXD. Nausea and vomiting were the most common adverse event, and these were almost all low-grade and manageable. Hematologic toxicity was uncommon. So in conclusion, in Destiny Resto 2, TDXD demonstrated statistically significant and clinically meaningful improvement in both progression-free and overall survival compared to treatment of physician's choice in the post-TDM1 setting. Uh, there was a 64 percent reduction in risk of progression or death, and overall survival was longer by 13 months. Uh, with TDXD compared to TPC. The overall safety profile is consistent with what we've seen previously with TDXD. Uh, ILD was 10.4 percent, and grade 5 events were 0.5 percent, which is lower than we've seen in the previous study of uh, Destiny Bresto 1, which is 2.7 percent. So in conclusion, Destiny Bresto 2 confirms the favorable benefit-risk ratio of TDXD in patients with advanced HER2-positive breast cancer. Thank you. Um. Uh, thank you, uh, Ian. Um, I'll start with the first question while those of you come to the microphone. Um, so uh, the, uh, this study shows that TDX is active in the third line setting. TDX is already being used in the second line setting. Are you, do your results suggest that risk physicians should wait and use it in the third line setting, or what, what are the implications of these conclusions? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. I appreciate you asking. Um, so it is true this study definitely shows that TDXD is active in the, the uh, post-TDM1 third-line setting. Uh, it confirms what we saw with the Destiny Bresto 1 trial, which was in the same setting. Uh, but in general, uh, we in oncology tend to use our best therapies earlier. We don't hold them back. And the main reason for that is because, unfortunately, there's significant attrition uh, of patients from one line to another, meaning that a patient is not able to receive a next line of therapy after they progress because they either, unfortunately, die of their disease at the time of progression or they develop some uh, significant complication from their progressive disease or toxicity that makes them unable to receive another line of therapy. And that attrition rate has been uh, seen in multiple studies to be as low as 10 percent with each line uh, versus as high as 20 to 30 percent with each line. And, and actually, in this study, 30 percent only uh, 70 percent of patients on the control arm, so 30 percent of patients were not able to receive a next line of therapy uh, when they left this trial, when they progressed off this trial in the control arm. So this attrition rate is pretty substantial, and given the, you know, really unprecedented efficacy of TDXD in this trial and in previous trials, uh, it would really be a shame for a patient not to receive uh, that drug just because you're waiting to use it in a later line, which they may never get to because of uh, some uh, unexpected event. So that's why I think this study, while uh, confirmatory, does not change our practice. TDXD should still be used in the second line setting in virtually all patients based on the Destiny Bresto 3 trial, which you'll hear updated results of uh, in a second. Uh, if you have a patient who has not had TDXD but it already had TDM1, certainly this trial would suggest you know, using TDXD is appropriate, but those, those patients are becoming less and less common. Hi. <clears throat> Caroline Hill with ASCO Post. Did you, um, are were there differences according to hormone re receptor status? 
Um, so uh, I'm sorry, I had to take out the forest plot because of time. But essentially, the progression-free survival benefit uh, was remarkably consistent across all subgroups. So it was all around that 0 0.36 hazard ratio for hormone receptor status, whether you had prior pertuzumab, the number of lines of prior therapy, uh, whether you had brain metastases, it was essentially a straight line. And so, so um, with all this data with TDXD, TDM1 now has just kind of keeps falling further down in the algorithm, is that correct? Well, so I, I, I think that's a good question. And where exactly do we use any of the therapies after TDXD is we don't have a lot of data. So I think, you know, the way most of us, and I would defer to my other distinguished colleagues here, uh, we use, still using the pertuzumab-based regimen in the first line, the TDXD now becomes second line. And after that, in third and later line, we have TDM1, we have tucatinib. Um, and, and other chemotherapy-based regimens, how you sequence those in the third and later line, I think it really depends on the, pers the particular patient and their preferences in the situation. But you're right, TDM1 is now third or later line. Okay, thank you. Um, is TDXD uh, ready to go head-to-head -head against trastuzumab, pertuzumab? Uh, well, it, there is already a first-line trial going on. Um, and I think that's a, a very valid question, and I'm very interested in the results. I certainly wouldn't sell TDXD short in that trial. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, we'll go to the next one.